right. Welcome back to the Club Innovators podcast. With me today are my two guests, Greg Rotzel, the VP of Sales for Capstone Hospitality, and Tyler Vandermulen, the B- VP of Partnerships for Capstone Hospitality. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. What's up, Kyle? Greg? Hey, Kyle. I'm excited. So today, I'm excited. <laughs> everyone's always excited when we're talking membership, baby. Today, we're going to talk about the 2024 membership trends. Um, so with that is looking back at some of the things that we saw in 2023 and then talking about some of the trends that we're seeing going into 2024, along with a little bit of forecasting. So going to be a really cool episode. Um, talk about some of the things that have been going on in the club space and talk about where we think it's going. So the first thing we saw in 2023 was there was a noticeable decrease in new organic leads and member referrals within the private club industry. What do you two think were the primary factors to contributing to this decline and how can clubs adapt and attract new members with the current landscape? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start on this. Um, you know, Kyle, as, as you know, we have been looking very closely at data just over the past two to, to three years, especially. So um, everything that we talk about in this is going to be discussing kind of the difference between COVID times and where we are at right now, our COVID times, how, however you want to look yeah. at it. Um, so it's it's going to be comparing those numbers, what we saw two years ago compared to what we saw last year compared to what we're seeing this year. Um, so I want to make sure that the, the listeners and, and everybody kind of understands that that is how we are looking at it. Um, and, and I also want to start out by saying what we are seeing in terms of trends is it's a normalization. Um, Looking at things in 2023 as compared to 2021, which 2021 might have been one of the best years for membership sales and one of the best years for clubs ever, (laughs) potentially. (laughs) Um, Comparing 2023 to 2021, there's naturally going to be a, a stark difference. Now, if you compare 2023 to 2018, 2019, I would say, based on my experience, it was about the same. Um, So that's why I want us to just understand that it's a normalization. It doesn't mean that things are going way downhill. It doesn't mean that times are incredibly tough. It just means that things are, in a way, back to normal. Um, So don't run for the hills yet, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I but out of this, there is a lot that that we can glean from it and a lot that we can utilize as we're looking at clubs moving forward. Um, As you said, right off the bat, organic leads are down. Um, 2023, they were down a a pretty solid percentage. I think it was about 10% um, at at some clubs, higher at some other clubs. Um, That's kind of the average that, that we have seen. And it, that's going to be natural. I think within COVID in 2020, 2021, even into 2022, the the leads that were coming in, it was just it was just a high number of leads. People had more time, um, they had more disposable income, so they were reaching out to clubs and and just getting a feel for things. Um, so more and more people were just organically reaching out. More and more people had some interest. Um, and we're looking into clubs, um, and now things are normalizing, and and that is naturally going to change. Um, so what we need to look at is how do we take what is happening right now and expand upon it, and learn from it, and get better, um, and utilize that for every single club. Um, sorry, that was that was a lot of talking. So no, I'll, it's I'll, perfect. I'll let you guys take it for a little bit. <laughs> so Tyler, let me ask you this with taking in what Greg just said there, how do we move forward? How do we attract new members? How do we attract new leads? If we know organic leads are down 10%, how do we gain that back in the aggregate? Yeah. I mean, that's the biggest, I think key that I picked up on from what Greg just shared is, you know, you look at 2024 compared to any COVID year, you're not doing yourself any justice. Those are outliers. (laughs) Those are, those are not the norm. So when you go back and look at your 2019 numbers of incoming leads and organic incoming leads uh, and member referrals compared to what we're starting to see across the board at our client clubs in 2024, it, it's almost right in line with where we expected it. Um, 
what we always preach, what we have to continue to preach is you have to have a diverse outbound lead generator calendar running at your club. Um, the days of just waiting for the phone to ring or a member to walk in and say, hey, I've got a new neighbor that's ready to join. Those are gone. You know, the, the, we see that trend commonly as the last three or four years, it's created a lot of complacency with sales directors. They didn't have to do as many outbound lead gens. Um, and that is the difference in why clubs are now continuing the success is they realize their incoming leads are slowing down and they need to go back to the well. They've got to have a diverse calendar of lead gens, track them, see what ones are obviously yielding those best opportunities and best closes and focus obviously more time energy resources on those leads to make up for that, that loss in organic income and leads. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, lead gen needs to be a 12 month thing, not a two month thing. Uh, we know from our experience that various lead gens have close rates and they go all the way from 30 days up to 90 plus days. So, you know, that if it takes some time to get to that 90 plus day mark, you know, you, you better make sure that you're running them throughout the year. Um, because if it takes 90 days for one to convert and you don't run it till November, you're not going to see that conversion till the following year. So it's very important to have those going consistently throughout the year. Greg, another big piece we've seen is resignation rates. Uh, there's been a significant increase in resignation rates among clubs in 2023 compared to previous years. Uh, you know, what do you believe are the main reasons behind that trend and what are the strategies that clubs can implement to improve that member retention? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, you know, just about every single client that we speak to and, and a lot of clubs that we speak to outside of our portfolio are expressing the same concerns. They're seeing a lot of resignations, especially compared to the last few years. I, I think it's something, again, that is fairly natural. You saw a lot of people joining clubs over the last few years, and they had a lot more free time. They had more disposable income. Uh, uh, again, um, now kids are they're, they're back to playing sports. Um, people are traveling for work again. Uh, people are going on, on more vacations or just traveling more in general. There's just less time to spend at a club. Um, so that's where I think it is incredibly important for clubs to focus on the member experience. How can they continue to get as many members as possible to utilize the club as as much as they can? Um, it, that is incredibly important. And, you know, we're it, it's interesting because we are seeing higher resignation rates across the board, which every club really should be prepared for and, and should have been prepared for going into this. Um, I have also seen just uh, I, I did a site visit to one of our clients uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was discussing with them uh, about resignations and, and what they were seeing. Um, and it was interesting because this past year in 2023, they actually saw a decrease in resignations compared to the year before, which, uh, to be honest, that's one of the only clubs I have seen that at. Um, now they are in a really solid, um, a really solid market for golf and for country clubs. So I think that that builds them up a little bit. But at the same time, they continued to create really great member experiences from the time COVID started through 2023, uh, you know, into 2024. They also did a bunch of different renovations. They took advantage of that time to build up the club. They put in a brand new fitness center. They put in a brand new beautiful bar area right outside of the clubhouse by the pool and putting green. Um, so not, not every club can be in the position to be able to do all those things within a couple years. But I, I think between the member experience and just building up the value of membership, that is that that is huge um, when it comes to looking at resignations and figuring out how to turn the tide um, and and bring those resignations down. Yeah, those are great points, Greg. Uh, Tyler, do you have anything to add to the kind of resignation rates there? Yeah, so I think and Greg is spot on. Um, yeah, I think from my perspective, when you look at why clubs are experiencing again a higher attrition than kind of what is the the norm. Well, again, we've moved out of the COVID era of you know, kind of making membership easy for people to, to make sense of with no other discretionary competition. As Greg you know, has mentioned, people are back to business, kids are back in 
you know, travel, soccer camps, everything that goes along with that. But then it's also the combination of the fact that a lot of people join clubs that had a low price initiation fee. And we know that there's a direct correlation of someone who joins a club that's less than a $5,000 initiation fee. They're not really scared to leave that money and, and leave that behind if they got a year, two, three years out of the, the club. And now their life is back to being a little bit more hectic and chaotic. So yeah. you know, again, there's that direct correlation of if, you, if your club charges a higher premium to join, people are obviously a lot more reluctant to just kiss that goodbye. So uh, I think that's certainly one. And then the clubs that we've seen that Greg just mentioned, one of our client clubs, um, they did a great job adjusting their programming and even sometimes their amenities to be more reflective of that new demographic that came into the club. A lot of clubs, you know, again, have that higher average age membership, changing of the guard, so to speak, when all these new young families that no one ever thought wanted to get into the country club space have now really taken it by storm. You've got to make sure that your programming aligns with all of these new families that you've brought in that have kids that want unique experiences. It's not just the wine dinners. It's not some of the things that everyone commonly associates with what happens at country clubs for their social side. Yeah, it's such a good point. We've seen the the family growth in the country club setting grow so much. So a big piece of that is programming for those families, right? Millennials are are finally finally a little later than most people coming into their own and um they're really, you know, they've started families later. So you have a lot of millennials that are late 30s, early 40s that that do have young families still and they're looking for that outlet, they're looking for the pool, they're looking for events for the kids and all these different things. So I think those are some great points to help fight resignation of, of, you know, moving your club that direction. Let's change gears a little bit here to membership categories. You know, the preference for Denver, uh, sorry, excuse me, the preference for different membership categories has shifted um, quite a bit over the past few years with the resurgence and an interest in full golf memberships in 2023, particularly among younger demographics. What do you think is driving this change and how should clubs, you know, kind of adjust their marketing strategy to capitalize on it? Yeah, I, I think Tyler touched on it, um, you know, just a, just a couple minutes ago. But um, there is that next generation. There is that changing of the guard. Um, you know, those, you can even start at 25-year-olds, but let's say 25, 30-year-olds to yeah. 40, 45-year-olds. You know, that range has to be an incredibly important range for every single club out there or almost every single club. Now, again, the market is going to dictate exactly how that club is going to look at prospective members and who is going to be a member at their club. Um, but the, the club has to be considering the experience that their existing members are getting, as well as what is the experience that you are showing off for your prospective members. Um, because you want to be able to show off for those those younger families that have a couple kids that are interested in tennis camps, that are interested in golf camps, that are interested in summer camps, in the pool, and and kids events and movie nights. It, you know, it, the clubs have to be looking at that on a daily basis and have to be adapting. Just just like anything um, in business, right? When, when you're starting to see these data points, you have to be able to adapt and, and make that change. Um, you know, it's interesting. And I think this is coming out of the last couple of years, but, uh, on another visit that I had to a, a club a couple of weeks ago, um, when I was there and I've seen this at a few different clubs, there are a lot of younger members that are working from the club, um, that are utilizing yeah. the club for, remote work because they are they're spending a lot of time away from their office or where they would maybe normally work um so i think that's a very interesting thing where it's kind of a, a co-working space um for for a lot of clubs and and i've seen that when i've gone to clubs and i've seen that it's always been the younger demographic um so i think just seeing things like that clubs should notice that and say all right how can we enhance that even more what, can we put in a, a space specifically for working? Can our members utilize these different spaces, these amenities for that, for business? Um, it, it's, uh, again, just adapting to those those different scenarios and adapting to everything that that we're seeing on a regular basis that is incredibly important for clubs. Tyler? 
Greg, I'll, I'll, I'll follow that. We'll continue the trend here. Um, I, I think, again, so much of it is, uh, you know, clubs might say I, we want to market specifically to the younger demographic. And sure, there are some ways to do that, more so through the digital components. Um, but I think it also starts with the offering. Making sure, I mean, I don't, I can't say with 100% certainty, but I'd be pretty confident to say a lot of clubs have made sure over the last five to 10 years to add in new categories that are reflective of younger people that golf that want to take advantage. It's not just a legacy membership because my parents or grandparents are members. It's a young professional membership. And that can range. We've seen as low as, you know, again, kind of starting at 39 and under. And then even some markets have every three to four years, a different category with different pricing. And it's got to be reflective of the fact that young professionals are raising families. They're working full time comparatively to, again, a little bit of the older generation that might be nearing or at retirement, they can spend four, five, six plus days the week at the club. Yeah, so you need to again start with making sure that there is a category that is structured appropriately from a pricing and strategy standpoint that gives the benefits of you know, what that senior or full golf membership offers. But again, taking into consideration the fact that this is a younger family that realistically can't lay out a thousand dollars a month just in monthly dues. Yeah, and really, you know, looking at basic statistics golf has grown over the last couple of years. Um, it, it is still growing. It's definitely growing with the new demographic. It's growing through things like top golf and golf simulators and all these other kind of golf adjacent things that make people want to get on the course more, right? You go out and you hit at the driving range for a little bit, or you hit at top golf and now you're ready to go play 18. Doesn't mean you're going to score well, but it means you're ready to go do it. Right. So that, that kind of stuff and that technology has really led into people playing more golf. And there's definitely been an upswing as well in female golfers. I believe it's up 10% year over year so far. So there's a lot more people that are trying to get on that course and in, in a lot more kind of that youth swing to golf that's going on than people may realize. Uh, so let's kick back a little bit to uh, some of these trends. Um, one of them, Greg, I know this is one we talk about all the time, the sales cycle. And it's really lengthened from 2022 to 2023. And we'll kind of monitor this going in 2024. We talk about consumer behavior and, you know, how can clubs adapt their strategies to accommodate the shift and the lengthening in that sales process to ensure a smooth and efficient sales process? Yeah. I mean, you, you have to stay on top of your sales process right away. That's, that's the first thought, right? You always have to be looking at your sales process. You have to understand where where your membership director is, um, what their process is like, what the prospects are saying, what that feedback is as well. Um, you know, there's there's multiple ways that you can speed up the process, and, and just thinking about it in general, naturally through all the different things that we have already said on this call and how things are normalizing, naturally the sales process is is going to get a little bit longer as compared to two years ago. Um, and I, I think clubs, again, it, it goes back to what we discussed, but creating that experience for prospective members, when you bring them out to the club, whether it's a private tour or a dining experience or a round of golf, you are showing them or you have to show them the best possible experience that they can have. Um, I think that first and foremost is really big because that can quicken the sales process. If somebody comes out to the club and they say, wow, that that was the most incredible experience that I have had at a club and I'm not even a member, but I, I want to join, that that can quicken the process a good amount. Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, and, and this is this is always a, a tough word to bring up, but incentives. Um, <laughs> we are, the, the market is normalized. We're back in, in times where incentives are very normal. We secret shop a lot of different clubs. We do competitive analysis of a lot of different clubs. And we see that a lot of clubs right now between 2023 and into 2024 are offering special incentives to prospective members, whether that is um, you know money off the initiation fee or a few months of delayed dues or cart fees uh, or guest fees. There, there's a lot of different options, but we're seeing it across the board at probably 75% of the, the clubs that we secret shop or reach out to. Um, so I think, especially if other clubs in, in your market are offering these types of incentives, you have to be aware of that. And you have to say, 
all right, where does the value lie in our club? Where does the value lie in that club? And what do we have to do to get those prospective members to come here instead of that club 10 minutes down the road? Um, you're, you're always trying to figure out how you can, how you can be the best and you can push people through that process. Um, so, you know, there's, there's always going to be a, a lot of different factors that you can, you can shorten that process. But I think those are two primary things. The experience has to be a 10 out of 10 and you have to be able to look at your competitors. You have to be able to look at your market. You have to be able to look at your club and the value that lies in your club and the amenities and potentially offer incentives um, to, to get people across the line um, to, to help them out and to make them feel good. Yeah, I, I think you make a lot of great points there. And, you know, while you were talking, I just saw Tyler just scribbling furiously on a paper. So, Tyler, kind of what are some key points that you've seen out of this? I, I know it's going to be great because I just I watched you just furiously scribbling. So so what are your thoughts on it? Well, let's start by first giving credit where it's due. Greg took all of my good ones. So I had to, <laughs> I had to immediately come up with a couple other ones. But don't, again, don't let me go first every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not breaking that trend now, Greg. You've got good rhythm going. Uh, so I think following off of Greg's coattails here, understanding your market is imperative. Um, it also, you have to understand your location. You know, if you are a club in the North that faces seasonality, your season to sell golf memberships is a lot tighter. It's a lot smaller. There is, yeah. you know, again, seven, eight, hopefully nine months of usage versus somewhere in the South where you're getting easy year round usage of the course and all the amenities the club has to offer. Um, so location plays a big role in your strategy. Again, having a strategy is also a big component of being able to create urgency. You've got to understand uh, what works? Um, you know, I think what people hear and Greg said, I think sensitively, you know, incentives, it doesn't mean you're giving away the farm. It means that you're giving some small value add to create a reason for them to have to make a decision. Um, something we tell everybody through our training process before they go to a club, you know, it's your responsibility to find out their timeline, but it's also your responsibility to make sure they know they owe you an answer. So finding out what their timeline is and doing your best to obviously speed that up. You know, there's monthly budgets, quarterly budgets, annual budgets that every sales director across the country is working on. Um, and it's no secret if, if I'm better at getting somebody to make a decision, even if it's a no, then I'm going to probably be, be better off at the end of the year because I've gotten through more opportunities than you have just from being a little bit more passive. So setting the expectation, letting somebody know, again, this is the process that we're going to take you through. And when we sit down at the end of it, I'm going to ask you to become the newest member at XYZ Country Club can't be afraid to ask for the money. And, Absolutely. And one final thing I'll throw in there is consistent follow-up. Um, just, just by working through the sales process the correct way um, and utilizing consistent follow-up, that can, that can shorten the process. Um, that can shorten that communication with, with each prospect. Um, you know, we, we see when we secret shop other clubs, we see, a lot of membership directors reach out, reach out to somebody once and stop. Um, and that's it. But that is, that is not the process that you want to follow. So if you are consistently following up, consistently calling and emailing and texting prospects, naturally, you're going to be able to move things forward a little bit quicker. Yeah, there's something to be said about proximity and sales. And when someone's buying something, we know that a lot of times it's an emotional decision. A lot of times it's proximity and touch points and all these various things that we just discussed. So those are really good points there um, from both of you. So let's shift gears and look forward to 2024. You know, what key trends do you anticipate shaping the private club industry landscape and how should clubs prepare to navigate these changes successfully? Yeah, I, it's, it's funny because we can probably go back to basically everything we have said <laughs> so far, right? Um, you can point to trying to shorten the sales process, incentives, creating a, as good of a member experience as possible, um, making sure that you are analyzing the market, making sure that you're adapting, making sure that you're building the value at, at your club. Um, all of those things are a part of it. Right. I think in 2024, we're going to continue to see a, an increase in resignations or maybe resignations will be about the same as 
as 2023. Um, I think organic leads are probably going to be about the same as 2023. Uh, I, I don't see a huge difference this year as compared to last year, but um, you have to adapt. You have to continue to build on what you have as a club, and you have to also understand your identity as a club and what value you provide to prospects and your members and really, really push that um, and, and take advantage of that. Um, I, you know, that's kind of surface level stuff, but um, everything that we have already said, those are, those are the things that you need to do. That's what you need to utilize to become better with your sales department, become better with your club. Um, so Tyler, you, you tell me what, what you've got. Um, and then <laughs> Kyle, I will also have a question for you when Tyler's done. Oh, so yeah, Greg, I, again, spot on. I think again, when looking at kind of the trends that I see, again, you're going to see longer timelines. We, we track that specifically through our CRM system and it's no secret. That's probably just going to continue to add a little bit more to the sales cycle, uh, more competition for discretionary spend. Something that we've talked about, uh, again, everything is back in full swing. People are traveling for work. People are back on big time vacations, uh, sports tickets, you name it. So people are looking to spend. A, uh, anywhere that, again, grabs their attention. It's not always just going to be the country club uh, place that it was during COVID where you know, everyone was screaming from the mountaintops that golf is a safe place. So it's great for the game, but it's not going to last forever. Uh, and with that, less organic lead. So when you then conversely try and figure out how do you prepare to navigate those changes, I think, again, so much of it is having an honest assessment of where you're at. You know, what's working well? Uh, look at your processes. Um, from there, then you need to make sure that you're going back to the fundamentals. Uh, you can't be waiting for the phone to ring. You can't be waiting for, again, members to continue to refer their friends, family, neighbors, colleagues. Those things are are pretty spent. Um, now it's time to, again, go back to the fundamentals, making sure you're taking people through a really nice, formal, uh, clean, and organized sales process. And then from there, um, you know, again, constantly kind of sharpening your sword and making sure that you're prepared. Uh, with lead generators and holding people accountable and getting those answers. So that's kind of the best way that we always continue to combat any any changes in the market that we've seen over the last 10 years. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yep. Greg, I, I believe you said you had a question for me. I do. Um, I think a, a big part <clears throat> of how clubs can adapt um, when it comes to membership sales, when it comes to their club, is marketing and advertising. Um, Kyle, you have been pushing that uh, immensely for for Capstone over the last couple of years. You know, we've built out a lot of different things, um, including drone work, including digital advertising. Um, tell me some of, or tell us and, and the listeners some of <clears throat> your thoughts on on what you have seen the last couple of years, and then what you think is incredibly important when it comes to marketing, especially at clubs. Um, especially for membership sales for 2024. Yeah, I think a good point, Greg said, uh, we deal mainly with marketing for membership sales. That's about 99% of what we do. Um, but the first thing is digital ads in, in examining your leads. Most clubs get what we call organic inquiries, right? They go to your website. There's a inquiry page. They fill it out. You know, I'm Mr. Smith. I'm interested in golf. Give me a call. Uh, here's my number. And what we've seen is that obviously we talked about earlier, there's a drop in organic leads is that we know that roughly 10% of your leads are going to convert just on average. So if your goal is to sell 50 memberships and you only have 320 organic leads, we know you're in trouble, right? Already you don't have enough leads to fit what you're looking, your goal basically. So what we do is we go to clubs and we supplement that with digital ads. We run Facebook ads. We do Google keyword, Google display ads, all those things. And those are designed to increase your leads monthly and get you to that number, right? And even if they don't convert at a, you know, more than a five or 6% or rate, we know if we can supplement that and maybe get you well past that 500 number lead, maybe we can get you into 700, 750, you're more likely to hit that goal. So that's a big piece of it is looking at how many leads you have and how can we increase that amount of leads. We know that more leads equals more tours equals more sales. That's kind of a fact of the nature, right? You can't close someone if you don't have someone, right? You know, I mean, Tyler, you and Greg have both been membership directors. If your pipeline isn't there, you can't sell. 
no matter how good you are at selling. If there's no one to sell, it doesn't matter. So that's been a big piece of it. The, the second piece that you talked about is just the overall appearance of the club. Me and Tyler have discussed this many times. We are that target millennial demographic. Greg, you are too. Uh, Greg's a little younger, but you know, they're looking for people late thirties, early forties. And I may have overshot the, the mark on Tyler's age too. So maybe it's just me, but um, late thirties, early forties that, that want to come and join the club and be a member there for the next 20 or 30 years and have families and this and that. Well, millennials like to look on websites. We like to Google. We like to look at Google reviews. We like to do all of that. I'm, I'm a little weird. I do that before I go to any restaurant. It doesn't matter who recommends that restaurant to me. I'm looking at a Google review of that restaurant and hopefully pictures of the interior of it. I care about that. And we found that when you upgrade your website, a lot of websites kind of have outdated photography, videography, things like that. And and really that should be updated every three years at the worst. I personally believe it's every other year, but I can see where I'm a little biased. But upgrading all of those things allows people to really tap into your club, really see how great it can be. If I go to a club and there's a couple pictures and then an inquiry form, I don't know how interested I am. If I go to a club and there's a flyover of every hole, there's pictures of the pool, pictures of the food, lifestyle photos of people having a great time, I'm way more likely to fill out that inquiry page. I know I'm not always marketing to myself, but just speaking of the demographic as we talk about getting younger, they care about those things. This is a generation that grew up on the internet. They were on it since they were little kids. They care about the opinions and things they read on it. So I think that's a big piece to it, Greg, is A, making sure you have enough leads, but B, when you do lead people to your website, make sure it really represents your club. It should look top notch. When people show up there, they should say, wow, I've got to be a part of this club. You have to create that FOMO, that fear of missing out because we talked about it, emotion sell. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to elicit an emotional reaction when they see our page. So I think that's a really important piece to it. I get enough for you there, Greg. You only get one one shot of the first impression, right? You really do. If I show up and the website doesn't look good, that's your first impression. And I'm probably not coming back. Well, I'll, I'll share this conversely. I've seen plenty of clubs out there that have very outdated websites, very outdated images, membership packets and brochures that are ancient. And you go to the club and you're like, holy crap, this place is beautiful. Like, why aren't you guys showing this off? So yeah. it, it completely goes in line with what you're saying, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. And if you're interested in that stuff, we're going to have an episode here either next week or the week after with Melissa Hansen, who's a, a membership director, but also a marketing expert. And me and Melissa will go through the entire marketing experience, talk about everything we've seen, trends, what looks good and all that. So if you're interested in that, hang on for a couple of weeks and we promise we'll get to a pure marketing episode where we talk about all that stuff. Um, but let me let me shift gears back here. And as we wrap it up, sorry, Greg, did anybody have anything else on that, that mark before we move on? Okay, I just want to make sure. So as we wrap up, can you guys share how Capstone Hospitality assists these clubs in navigating these challenges and opportunity uh, that come up, you know, through these years and and all of that stuff. And what specific services and strategies do we offer to help clubs thrive in that environment? Tyler, I'm I'm going to let you go first on this one. (laughs) Fair enough, Greg. Uh, So yeah, uh, we as Capstone Hospitality have uh, really a a lot of unique solutions that are geared specifically to membership sales at private clubs. Um, You know, where we got our foundational start was actually placing our own membership sales director seamlessly into the club level. Uh, They look like an employee of the club, but they're highly trained and they come with all the resources and back end, like yourself, Kyle, like yourself, Greg, that manage the process that help with the deliverables and the marketing components. Uh, So that's where we got our start. Uh, We've evolved like any good business has over the years, where now we can assist in a remote sales capacity with things like lead generation and just marketing efforts. Um, So a lot of different solutions that we can help. Uh, Every club has its own unique challenges and pain points. Uh, but you know, we stand ready to partner with those clubs out there that are looking to really maximize their membership sales opportunities. Uh, and the way that begins with every process is, again, uh, doing our due diligence, understanding the unique components of every club, SWOT analysis, competitive market analysis, and then creating a strategic plan aimed specifically at what the club's goals are, uh, while keeping in mind their traditions, their culture, their DNA as well. Yeah. And just piggybacking on that real quick. Um, you know, I think what we've seen over, 
you know, some of us have been doing this for almost 10 years, some of us for more than 10 years, some of us less than 10 years, right? Um, but we have a lot of experience specifically in membership sales, specifically at clubs. Um, and, and what we've seen is that not every club is the same, right? You know, Tyler, as you said, we got started with um, membership sales staffing at clubs where we train and place a membership sales director. Um, but some clubs for, for them, maybe remote sales makes sense. For some clubs, we have our our drive option, which is a mix of training plus being able to utilize our customized CRM system. So everything that we discussed uh, in our in our trends of of this past year and what we're looking at moving forward, all of those different services can enhance what a club is currently doing. Um, you know, the marketing side of things, what Kyle can do with drone work, with website design, with graphic design, uh, with digital advertising. These are all things that we're seeing, especially over the last few years. It, it is incredibly valuable. And there are a lot of clubs out there that just need a little bit of assistance. Um, and that's where we come in, where we can, we can push everything specifically in the membership sales lens. So there's, there's multiple different options of what we can do, how we can help out. Um, that are going to be very useful for a lot of clubs. Um, and again, every club is a little bit different. So, it, you know, it's just starting that conversation and figuring out what makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I mean, ultimately, you know, with Capstone, we're here to help with membership sales solutions all across the board. Something we very much uh, care about and we're very passionate about. So we've multiple different services that you can check out. If you're interested in checking any of these out, you can go to our website. It's capstone-hospitality.com. Um, if you want to reach out to any of us, you can reach out to us directly. Um, Tyler is Tyler at capstone-hospitality.com. Greg is Greg at capstone-hospitality.com. And I'm Kyle at capstone-hospitality.com. So if you have any questions, any thoughts about that or just want to have a chat with us, feel free to reach out. We're happy to answer any questions um, anytime. We work uh, all the time. So we uh, I, I don't know if there's any point where Greg or I or Tyler stop answering emails. So probably something we need to get better at there. But, uh, you know, we're here to help you out anytime you need anything. Gentlemen, thanks for hopping on with me today and discussing the 2024 membership trends. Kyle, thank thanks, you. Thanks, Kyle. It's been a pleasure. Thank <laughs> you.